we have Katie, Kyrie, and James Harden in their prime, which may not be right now, but in their prime, versus you, D Wade, <laughs> and LeBron in your prime. Three on three, who wins? Three on three. I'm gonna give the nod to them. Um, look, oh. I could I could score pretty good, and I go out there and compete. But they're, you know, they can do things I've you never seen. You think LeBron seen. would let that happen? Well, I mean, it's more so about in a three-on-three -three game, it's just about what could happen. These guys could just make all jumpers. You know I mean? They're incredible. If you I mean, watch them play, like, I mean, all three of them have that ability to be like, that's not fair. Into Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks, and today I'm so thrilled to welcome on someone that I have been eyeing to be on the show since quite literally day one, which is probably about two years ago. Well, I don't know how he said yes, but we have him here today, so I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm very pleased to welcome on two time NBA champion, 11 time NBA All Star, recently announced inductee to the Basketball Hall of Fame, and recent published author of Letters to a Young Athlete, none other than the one and only Chris Bosch. Chris, thank you so much for coming on the show. I am cheersing to you, toasting to a wonderful career and everything that you have going on here these days. Thanks for being here. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah, um, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Um, everything is wonderful. I'm doing great. The kids are happy and healthy. The wife is happy and healthy. Um, I'm a happy man. <laughs> I love it. You can just tell like it's it's emanating off of you. I don't know if you notice, I've got a little Molson Canadian here and I wanted to just preface this that I'm from Toronto. So big fan of you. Back in the day, still am a big fan. And oh, I can't you. wait to get into that in a second. But I just finished your book, as I mentioned. I loved it. Uh, neither am I an athlete anymore or a young person anymore. But I found that the book just had so many different themes that you could really take into different areas of your life. What sort of inspired you to put the pen to the paper and, and write this? Well, I mean, it was it was really a process, to be honest with you. Um, <clears throat> I wish I could say that I, that it, it just came to me right away in a dream or something cool like that. But it, it was just really a, a lot of sifting through the weeds and hard work um, when when the game was when I wasn't able to play the game anymore because of my medical condition. And and I was pretty much forced to retire on the spot. Um, every day after that was very difficult. And so I found myself trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do? <laughs> and what am, you know, how am I going to get there moving forward? And one of the things that I always read in so many books was follow those paths that you love, do the things that you love. And so, you know, writing has definitely been one of them. And, um, I just found myself writing, just writing my thoughts down, writing it out. It was cathartic for me, writing all those things, but more so getting back to that place of appreciation because, you know, we can lose things. One, one thing will happen to us and change the course over our lives and we won't be the same person, but, you know, we can still have that appreciation. We can still love the ride that we had. And that's what I found myself doing. And I wanted to help more people, more young athletes um, after that. Yeah, I, you know that when you said the word uh, cathartic, like that's how I felt reading it, that that was sort of what you were trying to get at. It felt as it, almost like a bit of a, a release in a number of different ways and explaining things that fans and people, you know, watching you would never understand. For you, after you wrote this book or during it, what did you learn about yourself that maybe you didn't know before? Um, that I have to work on patience. Um, this was a three year process. And the funny thing about this book is I had to live out my own principles while I'm writing it, you know? So mm. as I'm writing about getting over challenges, I'm getting over challenges, writing the book, you know, and, 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 you know, I just really had to really, really believe these words that I'm putting down. And that's what I want people to understand that 
you know, this is not just me sitting from the mountaintop saying, well, you need to do this and blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. I, I had to I had to live this thing out myself as well. So, yeah, well, you posted a number of questions that I found myself not really knowing the answer to, which now <laughs> I'm forcing myself to figure out my why yeah. and what is motivating me beyond all of the money and success, of course, that I have for the show. But you were on I, I'm just one quick question before we go to break. But you were on Trevor Noah's show. And I noticed that you said, you know, when you did have the blood clots and it ended your career, you had like a midlife crisis in a way. Yeah. How did you, what was that like? And sort of how did you initially deal with that? It wasn't any fun. I'm sure it wasn't fun to be around. Um, a, a lot of it dealt with doing everything, putting all my energy towards getting back into the NBA. So I was working out, you know, four or five times a week. Um, still, still in that mind frame on top of um, being a father and, and husband at home, but still holding on to that notion that I'm going to play. And I mean, you know, you can go through a crisis because you don't know, like people always say, well, you're going to be fine. You, you know what to do. I don't know what to do. What am I going to do? I play basketball and, and I'm so lucky to be well read and educated and all that good stuff. But Nothing can compare you, can prepare you for that. You know, you, you're going to have to go through it. Um, and it also it, it, it actually makes things a little worse because, you know, if you're smart enough to know where you are, sometimes it's like, oh, no, I'm not in a good spot. And, you know, it takes time to get out of that. And, and so for me, I just tried to make sure that, you know, I didn't get too ahead of myself and start, you know, I, I started to empathize and understand with, with ex-athletes how things happen, how someone can go off on the wrong path or wrong tangent. And so I was way more sympathetic to that. I was sympathetic to the athlete who, you know, played that last college game and then they have to figure out what they're going to do or played their last mm -hmm. high school game because all I did, sure, I had other likes, but to get to the elite level in the world, you have to you have to consume yourself with that subject. And I was all the way in there. And, and so I had to navigate through that and figuring else. I didn't even know the answer to the question. What else do you like? I said, I don't know, <laughs> you know, and and it's I had true. to start from there. Yeah. And, that, and then I want people to know that's OK. You know, I've been there. That's OK. You just have to, you know, stick with the process and continue to try and find those answers. I feel like you're also a therapist right now, my <laughs> therapist, but also to everyone because there you do. It is hard to figure out what it is you like, right? Like yeah. who are you beyond what you do? I yeah. think it's very fascinating. Yeah. And um, one of the things that you did and have done are now being a basketball hall of famer. And we are going to discuss that and a whole lot more on the other side of drinks with things. We have Chris Bosch here. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Taylor Rooks, and I had way too many drinks with Binks. Welcome back into Drinks with Binks. I'm JSB, joined by two-time NBA champion Chris Bosch, who is now recently being inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. And Chris, when you were a young kid playing hoops, could you ever in your wildest dreams imagine that you're going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame? No. <laughs> no, um, it were there were so many obstacles before that. Um, just trying to be a you know a good player, trying to make this be a starter on the team, and just trying to please my coaches and be the best player I could be. And then, then it grew into being in the NBA, and and there was always so much work to be done. Um, there was always some some other challenge, and and I never really thought about it. In the back of my mind, I remember I caught some heat for this. Actually, in Toronto, somebody asked me, do you think you're a Hall of Fame player? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just for, you know, here a young person has such conviction in their thought. I'm sure a lot of people didn't care for that. But, you know, I, I just the way I saw it was if I continue, just stay on my path and can keep doing what I'm doing, like my favorite players that I'm emulating are in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing, you know? So, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I just I just always had that confidence there, but for for it to really happen, I mean, um, it's indescribable. I, I really can't even put words to it. Um, how special um, it is for me, you know, it's just crazy. Well, it will be such a special moment for when it happens. Uh, that will be just great for you and your family. And you mentioned Toronto, of course. Uh, as a Toronto native, I, you know, I grew up watching you play, and I'm not. It's like I would. I'm probably like this. I'm not the same age as you, actually. I don't know how old you are. But it's not like I was a kid. Like anyway, uh, <laughs> um, but you, you know, you are our king in Toronto. Like, and, yeah. and it was very sad. When we saw you leave, but I think a lot of Canadians, at least the ones that aren't the crazy trolls, like understand <laughs> what you went to go do. But then it came full circle, as you mentioned. We see the Raptors win the championship, and you were broadcasting on the sideline from yeah. it. What what was that moment like to see Toronto win an NBA championship in in kind of like it was it was really a crazy time. <laughs> It was a crazy time. Look, I mean, if you would have told everybody, everybody, if, yeah, Chris, you're not playing anymore. You're actually retired. The Raptors are about to win the championship. Just those two alone, I'd have been like, yo, you guys are bugging. You know, I wouldn't even <laughs> listen. But Just the Raptors going to win a championship. You'd be like, no way. Like, what crazy world I, are we in? You know, I wouldn't even say that. I wouldn't say that. But me retired? Absolutely not. Are you crazy? You know, that was that was the thing for me. I knew I was going to play basketball forever. But, you know, just to be there in a capacity as a commentator. And, and <laughs> one of the things that I found that people kept asking me, like, yo, do we have a chance, Chris? Do we have a chance? You know, I had to smack them and be like, what are you here to do? You're here to win it, right? You know, I had to <laughs> <laughs> shake it out of them. But just to have that experience, and, and I was glad that it went so long, to be honest with you. I, I told the guys, like, look, I can't come to game seven. I, I was only, you know, able to go to games one through six, you know. So I'm, I'm on the tour. But, man, if you guys don't wrap it up tonight, I can't. <laughs> I yeah, can't do it. But I just to can. see, you know, just – for the city of Toronto to have that experience, not the city, but the country, to have that experience, I mean, you know, it makes it, it makes those past decisions to be like, all right, you know, they, they worked out, it worked out for everybody. And there's right. nothing like, there's nothing like an NBA championship. You know, not only winning it, but to have that parade and then to have just the journey, I mean, I could only imagine how on fire the city was and how much people talk about those times and we'll talk about it forever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was at game one, game six and that parade. And as you mentioned, it was wild. But before we go to break, I just curious because I know, you know, so much of your career is with Miami and, and the championships you won. But and, and when you left Toronto, you did get a little bit of flack from some people. Not me. I never said anything <laughs> bad about that. I understood. But what's your relationship like with Toronto? Like now? It's kind of like Great. an ex in a way. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's the ex that, hey, both you guys did better. You know, everybody, it worked out for everybody. And of course, yeah, there's a little bit of, you know, pain and a little tweak when you talk about it. But, uh, you know, to be honest with you, that was up until that point in my decision, that was the hardest decision I had to ever make. Um, I knew what the reaction was going to be. Um, I knew how the people felt about me and treated me every day. And I never wanted to let them down. Um, and we were going through the process together. And I knew I know how much of a bummer it is because, you know, when Vince um, got traded, you know, that yes. was that that was just like one of those things. And I'm like, oh, OK, I'm you know, I ended up seeing my future, you know, six, five, six years from that point, you know, so. I, I, yeah, the relationship is great. We've got a whole lot more with Chris Bosch on Drinks with Banks, guys. Don't go anywhere. Hey guys, welcome back into Drinks with Things. I'm JSB, joined by 11-time NBA All-Star Chris Bosh, who won two titles with the Miami Heat and was really part of 
the first sort of, you know, as we call them, super teams with the big three coming together with D-Wade and LeBron. And for you, Chris, in, in a way, in what way have you seen what you guys did usher in player empowerment <laughs> and what have you sort of seen as being the effects of that like the legacy of that and is that good or bad for the game it's a bit of a loaded question to start the segment yeah it's a bit of a loaded question it just depends on your preference um one of the realizations um that a lot of people have to do um and recognize is that it's not we're not dealing with amateur amateurism you know, this is a business. Um, players have went from a point of giving their all to a team and, and not coming away with their dreams intact. Um, matter of fact, they never even got a chance to sniff it. You know, let's be frank. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, those were my heroes, you know, and what do they all have in common? Fistful of championships. And I, in my journey, you know, I, um, I spoke to some of the greats of the game and they say, you want to you want to play on a great team. You want to play on the stage. You want to get to the NBA finals and play and win a championship. And when they told me these things, it's like, yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> and I just felt that, you know, we all felt that it was imperative to try right away. I mean, really, to be honest, like Dwayne put the pressure on everybody when he won in 06. Like, you know, we're coming out, we're supposed to be this destined class with the chosen one. And, the you know, this Dwayne Wade, you know, I mean, golly, nobody saw that coming. Went to the top of the world that quick in three years. And so, you know, I didn't even have a mustache yet. And my friend is winning a championship in my hometown. It's nuts. You know, so, I mean... We wanted to we wanted to put ourselves in a position to be on the best team, just like a, uh, a, a GM or president for a team puts the best team together. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to be proactive, more proactive in our career to make those choices. Um, it, you know, you see it. I think it's really, really playing out now. Um, there's so much more in the story uh, uh, that will be unearthed. But. At the end of the day, I know, and, and I guess I'll speak to the people that necessarily don't like those decisions that players make, it's professional. You know, if you were in your profession and you wanted to be successful and you wanted to move to a better team, we saw with Brooklyn, and I'm not beating up on Brooklyn, but we saw that that does not guarantee that you're going to win it all. You saw it with us as well. That does not guarantee you're going to win it all. You saw it with the Celtics. They did it through trades, but they won one championship. They probably, if you would have asked them, oh, yeah, we're going to win like five, you know, and that's just something that, you know, doesn't guarantee anything, but just putting yourself in a position to, you know, be in a sustainable position year after year to, to try to get a crack at the championship, you know, why not? That because because look that's what it's about. Yeah, no one can fault you for that. Yeah, that's what it's about. People make fun of you if you don't get it. <laughs> yeah, like if you know if I I don't know who want would want to come join drinks with Banks like and make us a super team and be like, of course. Well, the other way around. We're gonna talk about that on the show. Okay, but um, who would speaking of super teams? You mentioned the Brooklyn Nets. So we have Katie, Kyrie, and James Harden in their prime which may not be right now, but in their prime, versus you, D-Wade, and LeBron in your prime. Three on three, who wins? Three on three. I'm going to give the nod to them. Um, oh. Look, I could, I could score pretty good, and I go out there and compete. But they're, you know, they can do things I've never seen. You think LeBron would let that happen? Well, I mean, it's more so about in a three on three game. It's just about what could happen. These guys could just make all jumpers. You know, I mean, they're incredible. If you I mean, watch them play like I mean, all three of them have that ability to be like, that's not fair. You know what I mean? Like I play good defense <laughs> and then it's going to be like, well, who am I going to guard? I'm not guarding KD. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, know? you put me to anybody. I'm not guarding him either. Even me and KD are the same height. You know what I mean? Like. My, my game does not translate uh, 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 to that specific kind of basketball. <laughs> well, very gracious of you, you know, to say that. 
I feel as though you guys could give them a run for their money, especially. It'll, I mean, we look, saw. Hey, yeah, it'll be a game. Come on. I'm, Let's get I'm, that. You still have that. Come on. You. I know look, you do. Look, now, with that said, I'm still a competitor, and mm -hmm. yeah, we're gonna go out there and play. You're gonna have to beat me. But with that said, you know, when KD makes a one legger going out of bounds 30 feet from the basket, I can't do that. That was insane. <laughs> that was insane. That was insane. That was insane. And Crazy. then also, I just felt, I like felt so bad afterward that they lost. It was like, you know, after all that. That's a part of it, right? And that's, I talk about that in my book as well. Like, you know, that's a part of it. I mean, I know how it feels to be. And I can only imagine how it feels in New York City, Brooklyn, you know, but just have the best team, at least on paper, and the best mm -hmm. individual talent and not so much bringing out. And, you know, whether it's injury or whether it's not getting along or not gelling as a team or just right. getting beat by a better team. I mean, it's still it's still heartbreaking. And so for those guys, I mean, you know, they know it's not easy. And, 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 you know, it's always hard, you know, to get that first and even harder to get the ones after that. So, yeah. you know, it's um, it makes for good motivation for next year. <laughs> yeah. And it is remarkable what <laughs> Katie has done since coming back from the Achilles. So I think people forget that. We will give him credit for that. Coming back from an injury is incredibly difficult and actually mm -hmm. being the best player out there. That's even more difficult. But he's um, he's done it all. It's great. It's been great yeah, to watch. He was like the only player it felt like the camera at least was just. <laughs> but that's another story. Uh, we will have more with Chris Bosch after the break, including who he has to win it all in the NBA Finals. This is Drinks with Banks. Don't go anywhere. Subscribe to the Fubo Sports YouTube page for clips and full episodes. Follow us at Fubo Sports on all social media channels. Also available in podcast form wherever you find your favorite pods. Guys, we've had an awesome time drinking and binking here with two-time NBA champion Chris Bosch. Chris, one quick question. Who's going to win it all? Man, I'm, I'm going to go with the Phoenix Suns. I think even though he's out right now, I think uh, CP3, he's motivated. He's obviously having challenge after challenge after challenge. I think that's the road to success right there. So they've got a great team. I got to, you know, definitely, uh, you know, say what's up to the executive of, of the executive of the year. James Jones, champ, ex-teammate, you know, three-time champ. Uh, two-time champion, you know, with me. He's um, he's moving on in that next phase. I think they've got it. They look really good. And, it and they're well coached. Yes, and they would be, it would just be a great story for that city and for that team. And also, we can find your book, Letters to a Young Athlete, wherever books are sold. And where can we find you on social media? We can find me on social media, at Instagram, at Twitter, at Chris Bosch. Check me out. We're always doing stuff. Letters to a Young Athlete is available everywhere. If you don't like audio book, I mean, if you don't like the physical book, get the digital book. You don't like reading, mm -hmm. get the audio book. You can get the, I read it. We, you can get that too. So we're everywhere. Go to chrisbosch.com if you're having a little trouble ordering it. And we'll help you out as much as we can. We've got all kind of <laughs> Just ones. DM him. Just send him a personal <laughs> note saying, hey, Chris, I'm having difficulty. My credit card's not going through. Um, but in all honesty, Chris, your book was fantastic. Not just saying that because you're on my show. I found it very empowering. I found it very insightful to any profession. And thank you so much for joining us here. I really, really appreciate it. Good luck and congratulations on being inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me. Yes. And guys, you can follow all of our other content all of our other episodes on youtube at fubo sports and until next time bottoms up bitches